Hello, this is Helen. I'm going to be sharing the International Sunday School lesson for Sunday, July 31st, 2016, and the subject is Raised to Life. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this opportunity, Lord God, to look into your word and to be fed by you, Lord God, by your Holy Spirit. So we ask you to speak through us, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. We give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So as I said, the subject of today's lesson is Raised to Life. Taken from Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 4, um, 12 through 14, and 20 through 23. So today's study focuses on the new lifestyle of believers that have been freed from sin. Praise the Lord. Freed from sin, which results in eternal life. Romans 6. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer therein? Know ye not that in so many of us as were baptized into Jesus, were baptized into his death. So in today's lesson, Paul teaches on grace and sin. And he wanted these believers to understand that grace does not increase as sin increases praise the lord so the believer is not to continue in sin once we are delivered none of us none of us should abuse the divine grace that god has given to us so paul says that when they were baptized into christ they became dead to sin so the powers of darkness no longer have authority over a christian why because we've been redeemed by the blood of jesus he paid the price. So nothing is owed to Satan. The bill has been paid. Glory to God. The Christians should not live as though we're still controlled by the power of sin. Now this doesn't mean that we won't make mistakes or that we won't commit a sin. It simply means that we will no longer live a sinful lifestyle. Praise the Lord. And the Bible says that we say we have no sin we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us you can read that in first john 1 and 8 but the bible also says that if we sin and we repent praise the lord we ask the lord for forgiveness praise the lord the bible says he'll forgive us and he will cleanse us from all unrighteousness praise the lord look at ananias consider ananias and his wife sapphira obviously they had a problem with lying before they became saved so after they became Christians, they continued to lie. So when Peter asked them how much they had sold their house for, praise the Lord, they both lied. And it seemed uh, like it was easy for them to do so. So obviously they had continued to lie after they had been filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. So it seemed, like I said, it was easy for them to lie. Through grace, though, though grace abounds, we should not sin willfully the bible talks about that if we sin willfully there remaineth no opportunity for sacrifice no opportunity for forgiveness of sins if we sin willfully praise the lord so these two people paid a great price both of them died right on the spot you can read that in acts chapter 5. they lied to the holy ghost so the point is that god wants us to know that sin has no power over us if we do not yield to it glory to god so the christians at rome had been baptized in, into jesus christ and the word baptism means to be completely immersed it symbolizes being buried with the lord jesus christ our old man is buried and we rise up to walk in newness of life we become new creatures in christ glory to god now sprinkling i know that some people believe that sprinkling is baptism but sprinkling is not baptism we have to be completely immersed in water we must be buried in water praise the lord jesus himself was baptized glory to god though he had no sin at that time john the baptist was preaching repentance and he preached the baptism of repentance and you know what jesus obeyed yes he did he said that he was doing it to fulfill all righteousness you read that in matthew 3 15. john also preached that there was one that was coming after him and he was talking about the lord jesus christ 
that was going to baptize the people with the Holy Ghost. You can read that in Luke 3.16. So every believer, every single one of us must have the gift of the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. We must repent, be baptized in Jesus' name, and then the Lord promises to give us the gift of the Holy Ghost. You can read that in Acts 2.38. Jesus said that he would give the Spirit to whomever asked him for it. You can read that in Luke 11, 13, and again in Acts 2, 38. I thought about the Greek poet and physician, Nakanda. Um, he said, in order to make a, pill, a pickle, the cucumber had to be immersed in boiling water and then immersed in a vinegar solution. So, the first is temporary. Just go, immersing it into water was not enough. He had to immerse it into the vinegar solution in order for it to have a permanent change. Then the cucumber becomes a pickle. So it's the same thing with the being baptized. We have to be baptized in water, but we also need to be baptized in the gift of the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. That is the only way we can produce a holy lifestyle. Verse 4. Therefore we are buried by him. We are buried with him by baptism into death, that like as Jesus was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we must also walk in the newness of life. So, when the Lord Jesus Christ, or when we accept the Lord Jesus Christ, and we must accept him by faith, when we accept him and are baptized, it serves as a symbol to us, praise the Lord. We bury the old man of sin. Yes, we do. And when we're raised up out of the water, we are considered new creatures in Christ. New creatures. We become new creatures. Leaving the old man, leaving the old man buried behind. Face the Lord. We must be committed to obeying the God's word in order to live a life of holiness, which is free from the power of sin. On a personal note, I'll just share that I was baptized three times. That's right. I was baptized three times times because I went to different churches and it was not until I was baptized with the gift of the Holy Ghost that I was able to live holy. Praise the Lord. The Holy Ghost is a must. It is a must for all believers. It is the power of God that comes to, to live within us and gives us power to become a witness. Praise the Lord. It gives us power over demonic forces. Praise the Lord. We can walk in the newness of life when we have the gift of the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. After we receive the power, praise the Lord, the old man throughout our lifetime will continue to come back and try to find a way to return. Oh, yes, he will. But we must rebuke him. We must rebuke him in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. We must tell anger, I buried you. The blood of Jesus is against you. We must tell deceit, I buried you. We must tell jealousy, jealousy. Yes, we must leave jealousy behind. We need to tell it. I buried you, glory to God. I left you behind because the Holy Ghost will enable us to do that. So Paul speaks of walking in the newness of life. So the believer's walk must be one of faith. You can read that in 2 Corinthians 5, 7. And that means that we have to exercise the gift of faith that God has already given to us. It doesn't mean increasing our faith. We don't need to increase our faith. We just need to tap in to the measure of faith that has already been given to every believer. Jesus said he has given to us a measure of faith. And we just need to tap into it. And then our walk must be consistent with the Lord. You can read that in Ephesians 4 and 1. So, I can't walk with God today and then walk with the devil on tomorrow. Praise the Lord. That's just like going to church on Sunday and lifting our hands and saying hallelujah, hallelujah, and praise the God. And then on Monday morning, praise the Lord, we're going back to our old ways and we're living for the devil. We can't do that, absolutely. Hallelujah. We have to be consistent. And then in this walk with the Lord, I must love everybody, including my enemies. That's right. We have to love our enemies. And lastly, our walk must be Christ-like. You can read that in 1 John chapter 2 and verse 6. So, my understanding is for me in that is that in every situation, I need to ask myself, what would Jesus do or what would Jesus say? And that would be the answer to whatever it is that I'm dealing with, praise the Lord, so that I can be Christ-like. So Paul instructed Romans chapter eight, chapter 6, verse 12. 
the Bible says, Let not sin therefore reign in your mortal body, that ye should obey it to the lust thereof. Neither yield ye your members as instruments of unrighteousness unto sin, but yield yourselves unto God as those that are alive from the dead and your members as instruments of righteousness unto God. So Paul instructed these believers to uh, not to allow sin to live in their mortal bodies. Praise the Lord. Don't obey it. Don't allow it to control you. Glory to God. But rather, yield our bodies to the Lord Jesus Christ. Live righteously. That's what God is saying to us. John says, For all that is in the world is the lust of flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Can you imagine? That's all that the world has to offer us. The lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. Praise the Lord. You can read that in 1 John chapter 2, verse 16. So we need to choose Christ. Choose Christ. Glory to God. As Christians, we do not have to allow the members of our natural bodies to be used as instruments for wickedness. The Bible tells us that we need to mortify this flesh. Paul said, Mortify therefore your members which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, covetousness, which is idolatry. You can read that in Colossians 3 and 5. So every member of our bodies must be used to glorify the Lord Jesus Christ. So daily we must present our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. That's the word. Consider some of the members of the body. I was thinking about certain members of our body. For instance, the eye. The eye can get us into some big trouble sometimes, praise the Lord. When the enemy tries to attract us with the things that we see. And sometimes when we, we see things, they really are not as we think they are, praise the Lord. What we see is not what it really is. And if we are not careful, we will use what we see and talk about it. And eventually, it will cause heartaches for others. Because what we saw was not really what was. Glory to God. It was not the reality. Praise the Lord. So, and I would ask the Lord to help me to see things like he sees them. The tongue is another member that can cause us more headaches than we can handle. Praise the Lord. Solomon said, Whosoever keepeth his mouth and his tongue, keepeth his soul. Keepeth his soul from troubles. You can read that in Proverbs 21 and 23. And I thought about that. How many times I could have saved myself a lot of trouble if I just kept my mouth shut. Praise the Lord. So, another part of our body is um, our feet. Praise the Lord. So, we need to use our feet to carry us to places to spread not the latest news, but the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, glory to God. Help us, Lord, not to be like the Athenians and the strangers that were in their city. The Bible talks about it, Acts 17, 21. Paul said they spent their time in nothing else but either to tell or to hear some new thing. Can you imagine? <coughs> That's all they did every day, was gather to tell some news or to hear some news. God forbid, glory to God. So we have to yield our members to the Lord Jesus Christ so that it will produce a life of holiness. Glory to God. And we have to do that on a daily basis. So, on one hand, um, the devil is tugging at us every day. He's tugging at us every night. He's tugging at us, trying to draw us back in the world. Praise the Lord. And he uses the things that we used to enjoy when we were unsaved to tempt us, to try to get us to return to the powers of darkness, praise the Lord. And don't this don't be deceived. The powers of darkness are very strong. And that's why we have to keep ourselves built up, built up in prayer and fasting and reading the word, praise the Lord. The Bible says, greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. But we need to keep ourselves built up in him and not so that we can allow him to be great in us. Glory to God. We can choose to obey the call to walk back into the world of sin or we can obey God. So God is talking to us today. The Holy Ghost, which is his spirit that dwells within us, is wooing us to stay with God. On the same note, the enemy is also trying to convince us to come back. Yes, he is to come back, to come back to the powers of darkness so that he can destroy our lives 
eternally because really, basically, that's exactly what happens. We will spend eternity in a lake of fire if we go back into the world and we don't repent. Glory to God. So God is speaking to us to walk in the newness of life. Jesus paid a great price for our freedom, praise the Lord. We have the power in us to say no to the devil. Yes, we do. Verse 14. For sin shall not have dominion over you, for ye are not under the law, but under grace. Paul insisted that the believers were no longer under the law, which was a struggle for them, really. Um, especially since the Pharisees were so busy binding people, praise the Lord, and it was a real burden on the minds of the people because of their traditional restrictions that had absolutely nothing to do with their salvation. Glory to God. The law dispensation had ended during this time when Paul was talking to the Romans. Grace, grace was in effect, which is God's unmerited favor toward mankind. We didn't earn it, praise the Lord, but he gave it to us. So, the Bible says that um, Paul was encouraging these people, and he was uh, letting them know, he was pointing out that no longer did sin have rule over them. Sin hasn't had rule over us. Once we've been filled with the power, the anointing of the Holy Ghost, we have the power. The Bible says, Jesus said, I give you power <laughs> to walk on a serpent's head. So we have the power within us when we're filled with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost. That's why it's so important to get the Holy Ghost, praise the Lord. In verses 15 through 29, which are not a part, a part of today's lesson, uh, Paul explained to the people in the church at Rome that he was talking to them about freedom in a manner so that they could visualize the difference in their lives since they had abandoned life as a slave to sin and had become servants of God. There's a big difference. He wanted them to see that difference, praise the Lord. Romans 6, 20 through 23. For when ye were the servants of sin, ye were free from righteousness. What fruit had ye then in those things whereof ye are now shamed? For the end of those things is death. So Paul pointed out that when they were slaves of sin, they were not at all influenced by righteousness, but rather they were held in spiritual bondage. Glory to God. Sin was the master of their lives. So he said to them, look at, look at your life. Look at what your life was like. Praise the Lord. Their lives produced only things that they were now ashamed of. And the end thereof would have been spiritual death. Jesus also said, he said, if we commit sin, we are a slave to it, and it becomes our master. You can read that in John 8, 34. On a personal note, I can relate to spiritual bondage, praise the Lord. I experienced a lot of that, <laughs> praise the Lord, before I uh, received salvation and gave my life to the Lord Jesus Christ, and grace was extended to me, and yes, um, when I look back at some of the things that I did, I am ashamed of them now. Glory to God. And I'm so grateful to the Lord Jesus Christ that he did not expose a lot of the things I did in my unsaved life. Only God, but God. Glory to God. So we can reflect back on some of the things that we did, praise the Lord, when we were unsaved and held in bondage by the demonic forces of this world praise the lord we were sins slaves to sin it will cause us to lift our hands and we just take a look back glory to god it will cause us to lift our hands and praise the lord and tell the lord thank you thank you lord for deliverance thank you lord for deliverance from the powers of darkness thank you lord for freeing our minds and pulling down the strongholds glory to god that had taken residence in our minds glory to god Thank you, Lord, that we're not discouraged. Hallelujah. We're not discouraged. Praise that we're not feeling abandoned. I felt abandoned when I was held by the powers of darkness. But, oh, God, when the Lord filled me with the Holy Ghost, no longer abandoned. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. We can lift our hands and say, thank you, Lord, for the peace, the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. God said, I'll give you sweet sleep. Yes, he did. So whatever's troubling you right now, if it's nighttime, wherever you are, go to bed. Get a good night's sleep. God said, I'll give you sweet sleep. Glory to God. We thank God for it. Hallelujah. Verse 22. But now, being made free from sin and become servants of God, ye have put your fruit into holiness and the end everlasting life. 
So Paul goes on to say that before becoming Christians, they were slaves, slaves of sin, and they did not live right, glory to God. But now they were free from that lifestyle, free from the powers of darkness. Righteousness, they were able to live this lifestyle of righteousness, praise the Lord, living right and treating others justly, glory to God, which we are not able to do without the power. They have become the servants or slaves to God, which means a servant to the Lord Jesus Christ. And they were producing fruits of holiness. So Paul said, just look back. Look back where you have come from, where God has brought you from, glory to God. And it results in eternal life. When the Son sets us free, He makes us free, glory to God. We are free indeed. That's what the Bible says. Verse 23, for the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Paul continued to say, that, praise the Lord. He said, if we receive the pay that we earn for being a slave to sin, it would be eternal death. The Bible says the wages of sin is death. So the pay would be death. Glory to God. But God has given us a gift. We don't have to get wages. God has given us a gift. Free gift. Praise the Lord. And we don't earn it. It's a gift of eternal life through the Lord Jesus Christ. All we have to do is accept Him as our Savior and be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Praise the Lord. We don't have to earn this gift. Jesus Christ paid it all. He paid it all with His blood at Calvary. Glory to God. It's a gift of God. So today's study, it should encourage us and encourage me, praise the Lord, to value the difference, this great difference, in our lives that we have received from God and the power that he has put within us knowing that this great gift that he has given to us guarantees us eternal life instead of eternal death which is the pay for sin so as the subject says today raised to life raised to life we have been raised to life because of the blood of Jesus glory to God I pray you've been encouraged and I just want to leave something with you, to share something with you. The Lord has blessed me to publish my own Sunday school book. It's going to be available for the fall issue, December, January, and February. And I will let you know the um, ordering information. Praise the Lord. The cost is going to be less than $5. I think it'll probably be like $4.99 or somewhere in that, that area. Praise the Lord. It's one book will be for adults and teens, and it is just the Word of God um, in a, presented in it in a positive attitude, praise the Lord. And it's in simplicity, it's in very simple to understand, praise the Lord. I'm not a scholar of the Bible, never been to a Bible school, praise the Lord, but I thank God that He blesses me to be able to read His Word and he, he gives it to me in a simple way that I can understand it to apply it to my life, praise the Lord. I don't dot every I, nor do I cross every T, praise the Lord. But I wanted to understand the Bible in a simple way so that I can apply it to my life so that I can be ready to go back with Jesus. So I ask that you will pray for this book, that it will go around the world and that souls will be encouraged under the anointing of the Holy Ghost, praise the Lord. So, Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this study today. And we pray, Lord God, that it has been a blessing to someone else as you have blessed me in this study, Lord God. And that I will apply this teaching to my life, that I can become a better person. I want to be better, Lord God. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you.